Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lucas Nursery and Butterfly Encounter. We're actually live inside the Butterfly Encounter this morning, and we are doing our very first virtual field trip. So welcome, everybody. I hope you're comfy in your PJs right now. I dressed up just for you. Um, but today we are going to be talking about the life cycle of the butterfly. Now, to some of you, I might be a familiar face, but to my new friends out there, good morning. My name is Edna Kane, and I am very pleased to meet you. Now, where do we begin? Where do we start? Well, we're first of all, before you ask, how does a butterfly begin? We need to understand what a butterfly is. And we need to understand what we need to attract butterflies into our gardens, into our yards. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the insect first. Now, some of you kids at home might notice that I have a few different kinds of insects in front of me. Now, do all of these insects look the same? Mm, no, I don't think so. I think they all look different. And for those of you who are asking, these are not real. If these were real, Miss Sedna would be down the block and around the corner. But some of these insects, or I should say all of these insects, have something in common. Now, when we talk about an insect, again, what is an insect? What common factors do they have? Well, for the first one, hmm, I think I hear some of you saying it might be something about their legs. And you are correct. Insects have how many legs? Very good, Megan. Insects have six legs. Now, do they have six legs on each side? Hmm, let's count. They have one, two, three, four, five, six. They have three legs on each side, which makes it six legs. Now, let's look at the insect's body. Hmm, does their body look like our body? No, that's right. They have three parts of their body. Now, you can't see it very well, but let me show you. They have one, two, and three parts of their body. Now, just like our parts of the body has names, like this is my head, these are my arms, and these are my legs, insects have names to their parts of their body. Now, who can tell me what is the very first name of the insect's body? I'll give you a little hint. It's this big piece right here. It is called a, good job, Jaden. It is called a head. The first part of an insect's body is a head. Ding, 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 ding. Now, here's where it gets a little bit trickier. The second part of an insect's body is called a what? Hmm. Good job, David. The second part of an insect's body is called the thorax. Now, I know that's a little tricky. It's kind of like the Lorax with the lisp, the thorax right there. And the third part of the insect's body, it is the big piece right here. No, it does not begin with the letter B. The third part of the insect body is called the abdomen. Everybody say abdomen. Good job. So let's recap. Insects have six legs, three on each side, and they have three parts of their body. We're gonna say it all together. Insects have a head, say head, thorax, and abdomen. Good job. Now, let me ask you, do you have an abdomen? If you said no, you are not correct. We actually all have an abdomen. Now, let's for fun, point to where your abdomen might be. If you said right here, no, when you eat, does all your food go right here? Mine does. <laughs> no, not there. What about right here? Tickle your bellies. That is your abdomen. <clears throat> Some are bigger than others, but we all have one. So insects have six legs, three on each side, and they have three parts of their body. They have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. So let's go back to my insects on the table. This one has six legs, this one has six legs, six legs and six legs, and they all have three parts of their body. 
So does that make all of them an insect? Everybody nod your head. Yes, it does. But this one, does this one have six legs? And no, this one is not real. But let's count how many legs it has. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs. So, and it also has two parts of his body. So does this one, is this one an insect? No, it is a spider, therefore it is not an insect. So we're not gonna talk about that one. Now, butterflies. Butterflies have six legs and butterflies also have three parts of their body. They have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. So does that make a butterfly an insect? Everybody nods your head yes. Yes, it does make a butterfly an insect. So in butterflies are insects too. Now, let's talk about a butterfly. Where does a butterfly come from? Where does a butterfly begin? What is a butterfly's very first stage in its life cycle? Let's see, who can I hear out there? Ooh, I think I hear Justin. Did Justin say it starts as an egg? <gasps> An egg? Oh, oh, Justin, I, I like eggs. I eat them for breakfast sometimes. Um, I like them scrambled. Ooh, add a little cheese, mm, 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 some toast. So Justin said that butterflies come from chickens. Woo! Yeah, yeah, I have chickens. I have a chicken. <gasps> Look, yay! Hi, Nugget. Get it? Chicken? Nugget. Okay, so this is Nugget. I would tell you a little bit more about Nugget, but um, that's a whole nother field trip. So, Justin, you said butterflies come from chickens? All right, all right, all right. No, no, I guess they don't come from chickens, but aren't you the cutest? So, you're correct, Justin. Butterflies do not come from chickens, but she sure is cute. If a butterfly egg doesn't come from a chicken, where does a butterfly egg come from? Hmm, what is that that you say? It comes from the mama butterfly? You are absolutely correct. And I actually have a mommy butterfly here with me today. Her name is Molly. I can hear all of the fifth graders at home rolling their eyes already. This is Molly. Molly had a little accident. She only has five legs, but that's okay. Molly still gets around just fine. But Molly is a monarch and we will call her Molly the mommy monarch. And Molly, the mommy monarch, has four stages in her life cycle. And we already said the very first stage in the life cycle of a butterfly is its egg. Isn't that right, Molly? Absolutely. And guess what? I actually have an egg to show you. And it's going to be right over here. It is so small, guys, that it can fit on top of a period at the end of a sentence. But it's not this egg. And yeah, I don't want to throw this one because it's real and it'll make really good breakfast tomorrow. But butterflies start as an egg, but how does it get there? Well, Molly has to fly around, fly around, and she has to find a very special plant. And we call those plants host plants. Now everybody say that with me. Host plant. Good job. Now say it like you're Santa Claus. Say ho ho host plant. Excellent. Now Molly has to fly around, fly around, and she has to find her one special host plant. Because guys, it works like this. Butterflies are we, we like to call species specific, which means this. Each species of butterfly will have their one specific host plant. So let's say if Addie were a monarch butterfly, she would have one special plant. If David were a black swallowtail butterfly, like a ninja, he would have his own special butterfly. If Caleb were a long-tailed skipper, he would have his own butterfly. And if Madison were a painted lady, she would have her own special host plant. But wait a minute, do boy butterflies lay eggs? 
Hmm. No, they do not. Only girl butterflies lay eggs. But the boy butterflies are going to be flying around their specific host plants too because that's where the girls are. Hey. Ew, that's disgusting. Stop that. So, how does the butterfly find its special host plant? Well, Molly has to fly around, fly around, and she has to smell for her one special host plant. But wait a minute. Hit the pause button for a second there, but don't really do it, okay? Have you ever seen a button nose on a butterfly? Mm -mm. If butterflies don't have button noses, what does a butterfly smell with? Let's see, who's asking me out there? Hmm, Chloe asked me. So, Chloe, do you think butterflies fly around and do you think they smell with their feet? So they fly around going <laughs> mm, That's a good answer, but nope, butterflies do not smell with their feet. Um, oh, somebody asked, do they smell with their tongue? So you think they fly around going <laughs> Yeah, no, butterflies don't smell with their tongue either, but I'll give you a little hint. What are the two little things sticking out from Molly's head? That is correct. Those are antenna. So a butterfly smells with their antenna. They can actually use their antennas for three things. They use their antennas for smelling. They use their antennas for touching. And they use their antennas for, whoa, well, well, good job. They use their antennas for balancing. That's how what a butterfly smells with. So a butterfly has to fly around, fly around. She has to smell for her special host plant. And once she finds that special host plant, she lands on it. She lays a little teeny egg right under the leaf of that host plant and she flies away and lets nature take care of that tiny little egg. And out of that tiny little egg is going to hatch out a great big hippopotamus. Uh, no, it does not hatch out an hippopotamus. I was just making sure you guys were awake. Out of that tiny little egg hatches out a ginormous caterpillar. No, not that either. Out of that tiny little egg hatches out a tiny little caterpillar. Now, these caterpillars that you see in front of me, they're a little on the big side, okay? But when a caterpillar first comes out, it is super tiny. And I've already showed you how tiny the egg is, but I have a fake one over here that I want to show you. And the tiny little egg will look like this and the caterpillar will come out of its eggshell. Now let me ask you this. When a caterpillar comes out of its egg, what is the caterpillar's very first meal? Does it have waffles? I had waffles for breakfast this morning. No, not waffles. Um, does it eat toaster strudels? Did you have toaster strudel for breakfast this morning? Okay, what about bacon? Yeah, no. When a caterpillar first comes out of its egg, it does not eat a leaf. The very first meal a caterpillar eats, it's its eggshell. Now, I know some of everybody's going, ew, that's disgusting, but I'm sure it's very healthy for them. And as that caterpillar continues to eat, it grows and grows and grows. Now, there are two words for caterpillar. A lot of people want to call my friends over here a worm. But no, we go fishing with worms. This right here is a caterpillar, or the scientific name for him is called a larva. Everybody say larva. Larva, good job. I like to call it a la la larva. Okay, so this is a larva. Now, as this caterpillar continues to eat, it's going to grow. But as it grows, does its skin grow with him? Hmm, now let me ask you, when you grow, do your clothes grow with you? Nope, your moms and dad wish your clothes would grow with you, but they absolutely do not. But what about this? When you grow, does your skin grow with you? Everybody nods your head yes. 
Yes, your skin does grow with you. But when a caterpillar grows, its skin does not grow with him because they have something called an exoskeleton. Everybody say it like you're mad. Exoskeleton. It's like a new superhero. Mr. Exoskeleton. Da, da, da. Basically, it means this. As a caterpillar grows, watch Miss Sedna get 10 years younger. As a caterpillar grows, his skin gets tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter until it splits. And that caterpillar has to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle out of its old skin. It then jumps out of its old skin and guess what it does with it? Now listen to the question. What does the caterpillar do with his old skin? No, I didn't say what does he make with it. I said what does the caterpillar do with his old skin? You are correct. He eats it. Ugh, yeah, I bet you it tastes just like chicken. That caterpillar will eat his old skin and then he continues to eat and grow some more. But guys, when a caterpillar is done being a caterpillar, it does something very interesting and it will shed its skin five times. On the last time it's gonna shed its skin, it actually will tell me. Now, does he say, Miss Edna, I'm done, tapping out. No, no, he doesn't do that. What the caterpillar will do, he will find a nice quiet spot and he will make a little silk pad and he will hang upside down and he'll look like the letter J in an alphabet, in the alphabet. What letter in the alphabet comes down? Did I already give away the answer? Oh, Miss Sedna, silly. He will hang down and loop up and that letter in the alphabet is called the J position. And when that caterpillar goes in the J position, it is the very last time that that caterpillar is going to shed his skin. He goes from being a caterpillar with chewing mouth parts that used to eat leaves and he sheds himself one last time and he forms this really cool capsule. And here is the capsule right here. And this one is real. Actually, somebody asked me recently, Miss Edna, is that a piece of jewelry? Well, I guess it could look like a pair of earrings, right? But it's not, and this one is real. Who can tell me the name of this really cool capsule? Mm, oh, oh, I think I heard cocoon. Well, that's not a cocoon. It kind of looks like a jelly bean, right? But nope, that's not what it is. Oh, oh, I think I heard chrysalis. And if you said chrysalis, woohoo, you are correct. A butterfly or a caterpillar transforms himself into a chrysalis. Now, just like caterpillar has two names, caterpillar and larva, chrysalis has two names. Now, I personally like to call it the stinky name. Do you know that stinky name? Oh, I think I heard somebody say it. It is called the pupa. Everybody say pupa. Good job. Now say it like it stinks. Pupa. Good job. Now just don't call it a pupa because that's what you do in the potty. All right. So this is a chrysalis or a pupa. But wait a minute, Miss Sedna. What is a cocoon? Well, this is a cocoon. Do these look the same? No, they don't look the same at all, do they? This one is on a stick and I see leaves and uh, I think I see long pieces of thread, which is called silk. Who makes silk? Or what caterpillar makes silk? Well, that would be the silk moss. And this is a cocoon. So everybody repeat after me, especially the grown-ups. Everybody say, butterflies make chrysalis and moths make cocoons. Good job. Some of you grown-ups have been lied to all your life. Therapy starts tomorrow, okay? This is a cocoon. This is a chrysalis. Now, who here thinks inside?
inside this chrysalis is a butterfly. Raise your hand. Who here thinks inside this chrysalis is a caterpillar? Raise your hand. Who here thinks inside this chrysalis is a butter pillar? Raise your head. Uh, uh, oh, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. What about a caterfly? Yeah, that's not in the textbooks anywhere either. Now, um, actually, guys, what's in here is actually not what's important right now. What's in here and what's important is what's happening inside. And what's happening inside is that transformation from caterpillar to butterfly. And we call that transformation process one great big word called the metamorphosis. Everybody say metamorphosis. Good job. It's not metamorpho, bro. It's metamorphosis. And this is what's happening inside there. I get so excited about this part. Inside that chrysalis, that caterpillar cells are dying and the butterfly cells are coming to life. And that caterpillar goes from having to walk everywhere to now it's gonna fly. And one day after seven to 10 days inside that chrysalis, that butterfly is gonna be all transformed in there and she's gonna go hi -yah! She's gonna kick open that chrysalis door. She's gonna crawl out of that chrysalis and <gasps> dun dun dun. What happened to Molly's wings? <gasps> Are they what? or are they dry? Actually, Justin, you are correct. They are all wet. They kind of look like the laundry when it comes out of the washing machine. And if Jaden, you don't know what that laundry looks like when it comes out of the washing machine, your job today is to help mommy with the laundry. So that butterfly crawls out of that chrysalis and she climbs up and finds a nice high spot and there's tiny veins in her wings and her body is super duper chubby. So what she has to do is she has to pump and pump and pump and pump all of that body fluid in the very tiny veins in her wings. And while she does that, she lets gravity help pull her wings down. She lets the sunlight dry her wings up. And then she does something very interesting. She seals up those tubes so nothing ever comes in or out. Boys and girls, that's why if a butterfly breaks her wings, they never ever grow back because there's nothing inside the wings anymore to fix them. But if you scrape your elbow or you scrape your knee, it makes a scab and then that goes away, right? Well, butterflies can't do that. And once that butterfly's done drying her wings, she's ready to do what? She's ready to boogie. Ooh, ooh. Oh, embarrassing. No, she's not ready to boogie. She's ready to start flying. And guys, the process will start all over again. So let's recap. Very first stage in the life cycle of the butterfly is the egg. Everybody say egg. Good job. The second stage in the life cycle of the butterfly is the caterpillar. Everybody say caterpillar. Good job. The third stage in the life cycle of the butterfly is the chrysalis. Everybody say chrysalis. And, and extra credit, what was that stinky word? Pupa, good job, not pupa, pupa. And the fourth stage in the life cycle of the butterfly is the actual butterfly. Good job, guys. Now, butterfly gardening's not hard, guys. It's not very difficult to attract butterflies into your backyard. It's super easy. It's all in getting the right plant. And here at Lucas, Nurse, here at Lucas Nursery, we actually have all of those plants for you. We have the host plants, and the second plant you need for a butterfly is something called a nectar plant. And nectar plant is basically what? Flowers. Now, not all flowers work because butterflies drink what? Nectar, good job. And we get nectar from Publix, right? No, we don't get nectar from Publix. We get nectar from the flowers. And not all flowers have nectar, but these flowers over here do have nectar. And the butterfly will fly around, she will land on the flower and drink. Here's another 
really interesting facts about the life cycle of the butterfly. How long do you think a butterfly lives? Let's see. Put some, give me some numbers out there. How many? Let's see. Uh, I think somebody said five years. Mm, that's a really good guess, but that's not it. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, I think I heard somebody said six months. No, that's a good guess, but that's not it. Everybody put up two fingers. Good job. The average butterfly actually only lives two weeks. <gasps> I know that sounds a little sad, but boys and girls, butterflies are always doing something. There's always a stage in the life cycle that is happening. That's why we will always have butterflies. Now, do butterflies bite? No. Do butterflies have teeth? No. Well, how come some of you, when you come in the butterfly encounter, you act as if it's a giant pterodactyl coming your way and the butterfly's going to hurt you? Butterflies don't hurt. There are actually no harmful butterflies out there. And caterpillars. There are actually no stinging butterfly caterpillars. It's getting a little warm in here, guys. But this caterpillar is super duper gentle. Because if it weren't, I couldn't do this. Um, is there something right? Is there something right here? Oh! Is there something right there? Ah! <laughs> Guys, caterpillars don't hurt. You can hold caterpillars. They prefer you not to, but there is no stinging butterfly caterpillars. Now, there are stinging moth caterpillars, but there are no stinging butterfly caterpillars. Now you asked me, how do I know the difference? Well, it's simple. If you ever want to know what a caterpillar is going to become, you have to look at what it's eating. So if you tell me, Miss Edna, I have a caterpillar that's eating my fennel right down there. Then I could tell you that the only caterpillar that eats fennel is the black swallowtail. If you tell me, Miss Edna, I have a caterpillar that's eating my azaleas. Well, I can tell you there are no butterfly caterpillars that eat azaleas, only moths. So boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, butterflies are super duper easy to attract in your backyard. They're super easy to do at home. It just takes a few plants to enjoy butterflies in your backyard. Are butterflies important in our habitat? Well, absolutely. Butterflies are pollinators. They help pollinate our plants. Now, what's the number one pollinator for our backyard? Yes, you are correct. The bee. Bees are the most important pollinators in our backyard, and sometimes we seem to forget those. Um, but boys and girls, I'm so glad you joined me today. That is rounds up pretty much the life cycle of the butterfly from start to finish and how it ends and where it begins. Now, I'm sure some of you have had some questions out there. And um, Caleb is actually going to come over and he is going to share with me some of the questions that you have been asking. Hi. All right, Miss Edna, you've got a few questions to answer. Ooh, yay. Um, one from Tyler wants to know, how do you tell the difference between a male and a female butterfly? Oh, Tyler, that is a very good question. And sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's hard, but certain butterflies, the boys and the girls have specific characteristics and it's going to be specific to that one species of butterfly. So for instance, monarchs, um, this monarch over here, even though it's fake, um, I could tell that it would be a girl butterfly because boy monarch butterflies have a very specific dot right in the bottom of their hind wing. Now there's a zebra longwing that's just come past my, uh, my view. Zebra longwings are a little bit difficult. Um, you really sometimes can't tell the different species between boy and girl um, so, um, with some types. Now, certain butterflies, it'll be the color. So for instance, black swallowtails have a beautiful amount of blue in their hind wings and the males are mostly all black. But there are some species of butterfly, 
not a clue. Even the best scientists agree that some species of butterfly, it's a little bit difficult. So again, depending on the species of butterfly, it will be easier or, or it could be hard to determine which is a boy or a girl. I hope that answered your question. Very good. Mm -hmm. Another question. So Marla wants to know how long does it take for that butterfly when it comes out of its chrysalis to pump its wings and get dry before it can fly? Marla, that's a really good question. Um, there is a very small window of opportunity for these butterflies to emerge from that chrysalis. And sometimes they don't make it in time and sometimes their wings could dry deformed or if anything is inhibiting that wing, from drying, let's say something's in the way and they could dry crumpled and deformed. But on average, dep it depends on the size of the butterfly. A lot of my smaller butterflies will dry pretty quick and be off. But some of my larger butterflies, it can take up to two hours for them to dry their wings. So again, depends upon the species and also it depends on the temperature. Um, butterflies have to achieve an over 80 degree body temperature just to even take flight. So in a nice warm morning, when it, the temperature is perfect, it could take a little bit of a shorter period of time for them to dry their wings and get to flying. I hope that answers your question. Very good. Another one. So Maya wants to know how far can a butterfly fly? Ooh, Maya. That depends on the species of butterfly. Again, we know that monarchs can fly for miles and actually the migration process of the migrant of the monarch is four generations up and one generation down so it depends upon the species of butterfly but i wish i had a specific number to give you but i'm gonna have to look that one up myself because i don't really follow the migration pro um, patterns of the specific species of butterflies but it's been in my experience that they can fly a pretty good distance more questions so nora is asking how much nectar can a butterfly drink and how does it drink? Oh, good question. First, I'm gonna address how does a butterfly drink? Well, a butterfly, when it's in cat, well, a caterpillar, when it's in caterpillar form, has chewing mouth parts that eat leaves. But when it goes through the metamorphosis and turns into a butterfly, it loses that mouth, those uh, mouth part abilities, and it develops something called a proboscis. And a proboscis is a very long straw-like tongue. So the butterflies will fly around, fly around, and they will sip with that proboscis inside the flowers. And some of our larger butterflies, like our swallowtails, like could really get deep into some of the flowers with that really long throat in them. Um, but some butter, 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 butter butterflies need those short nectar plants so they could get into those flowers with that proboscis. Now, as far as how much do they drink? Well, I'm assuming they're gonna drink to what they need. Um, they're gonna fly around. I see butterflies flying around and nectaring all throughout the day but I also see them resting and sunning themselves as well. Now also, you have to remember that not all flowers have a lot of nectar, so that's why it's super important that it's a three to one ratio of flowers in your garden. You need more nectar than you need host for the butterflies because butterflies do need copious amounts of nectar in the garden. Very good, another question from a viewer out there. Hungry, hungry caterpillars, they want to know how fast can a caterpillar eat through Ooh. how many leaves or a plant? Ooh, well, as you can see by this beautiful specimen right here, um, caterpillars eat a lot and they don't stop. They eat morning, noon, and night. Even through the night, they can eat. However, a caterpillar will stop eating when it goes through that molting process. So a lot of times um, people come to me and they say, my caterpillar hasn't moved, it's not doing anything. And it's probably because it's going through that molting process where it has to shed that skin. But caterpillars eat all day with the exception of that molting time that they need to take the break to shed that skin. But then once they're done, let the eating games begin. A lot of people sometimes wanna know, well, how many plants do I need? Well, it depends on your plant, how big the plant is. Um, I'd like to say it's one to two caterpillars per plant that they're gonna need. 
sometimes they eat more, sometimes they eat less. It, again, it's very dependent upon what kind of um, milkweed that they're eating. Very good. Another question. Karen wants to know, how do you start a butterfly garden? Oh, Karen, that is so easy. Come see me. I will give you all the information. But how does a butterfly garden start? Again, it's super easy. It's the two plants. In order to start a butterfly garden, you need hosts. Well, actually, let me rephrase that. In order to start a butterfly habitat, you need your two plants. You need your host plants and you need your nectar plants. And again, it's a three to one ratio. It's three nectar plants to every one host plant. It's super easy. Again, if you want to attract monarchs into your yard, then you plant milkweed. If you are more partial to yellow butterflies and you want to attract the sulfurs, then you plant sennas or cassias. Each butterfly is species specific, as I said in the morning. So depending on what you want to attract is what you will plant. All right. Couple more. Jude wants to know. Hey, Jude. Hey, Jude. I'm sorry. How long can a caterpillar stay in its chrysalis? Oh, that's a really good question. Well, once the caterpillar goes into its chrysalis, that's the end of the caterpillar. That's when that super cool metamorphosis starts to take place. Now, depending upon the species of butterfly that it will become, will determine how long it goes in there. The average butterfly, let's say the monarch, the monarch will be in its chrysalis for about seven to 10 days, depending upon the temperature. Swallowtails can take a little bit longer. The entire life cycle from egg to butterfly takes approximately 28 days, 28 days, okay? So a lot of people will come to us, especially coming out of the winter, and they're like, is this a good week for butterflies? Well, the cold weather slows the life cycle down and warm weather accelerates the life cycle. So this chrysalis can take up to two weeks to hatch out or longer if it's super cold. But typically when the weather is nice and warm, I like to say when the AC starts running morning and nighttime, we start to see a faster production of butterflies because the butterflies like it warm and toasty. So that's when we'll start seeing a faster production of butterflies. I hope that answers your question. Very good. Final question. Okay. There's been lots of questions, but you can also reach out to us on Facebook or any of the other medias out there for more questions. Phone us. <laughs> um, and so the last question is, how can they experience this life cycle at home? Oh, that's a great question. How can you experience a life cycle at home? Well. You could do one of two things. You can purchase milkweed plants and you could put them outside. And I promise you, if you plant it, they will come. Or you can come to see us and we have little kits. Um, they are the painted lady species of butterfly, which are done indoors. Um, they are a specific species that has an artificial diet. Um, but the beauty about that is that no plants are required and you could done, do them in an air conditioned environment. Now we don't start you out as an egg because that takes a while, but we do start you out as a caterpillar and you could watch the caterpillar go from caterpillar to chrysalis where then you would transfer them into a habitat which we do sell here, shameless plug. And then they will turn into the butterfly where you could take them outside and release them. But if you come here or wherever you're located, um, I know some of you are not in the state of Florida or central Florida, go to your local nursery, see if they have specifically butterfly plants. But more importantly, you have to get host plants that are not treated with pesticide. Unfortunately, people don't like that this pretty plant becomes this plant. So a lot of nurseries, um, they're just not as educated as we are. So a lot of them will treat the plants because they don't want the caterpillars right away. So um, you wanna make sure that you find your host plants specific to your state or specific to your environment. Um, but if you're local in Florida, we have everything right here that, and we'd be more than happy to get you started at home. Be it monarchs, sulfurs, black swallowtails, or something done indoors like the Painted Lady Caterpillar Cups. Very good. Thank you so much, Edna. Well, 
Thank you. And for everybody at home, thank you so much for joining me on behalf of the Lucas family, on behalf of myself and my wonderful staff here. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you soon. My name is Edna. I love to have my repeat offenders walk through that door. But for now, we wish you a very good day and we wish you many blessings to you and your family.